Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome inside Blake Arena for this afternoon's NUMAC conference matchup between the MIT Engineers and the Springfield College Pride. I'm Daniel Curran alongside Kevin Sachs, as always. Kevin, the Springfield College Pride, they've won seven straight games, all in conference play. What do they need to focus on today to make it eight? You know, last game. You know, last game, you know, they against MIT at least. Jake Ross didn't have a big game, and you know, everyone's used to Jake Ross, Jake Ross, Jake Ross, but it was the other guys, Colin Lindsay, Trey Witter, Daryl Costa, and I mean, I think that's what's really been the difference in this winning streak, is that they've gotten consistent performances from other guys not named Jake or Heath, because we've seen the depth. Guys like Trey as the sixth man, Daryl, Colin, I mean, Noah Cummings as well, I mean, he's really stepped up into a huge role his freshman year. I mean, I really think with this Springfield team, it's you know you're going to get something out of Heath and Jake. It's what are you going to get out of the rest of this team? What you get out of the rest of this team, that's what makes them the number 20 team in the country. The Pride come in with a record of 19-3, 10-1 in conference play, while the MIT engineers are 10-12, 3-8 in NUMAC uh, action. Uh, so, Kevin, who is one person on this MIT team that you're really looking for today? So... I think it's going to be Ian Hinckley. Ian Hinckley leads MIT in most offensive categories. He is kind of their bona fide superstar. He's their leading scorer as well with 19 and a half a game. I think you also got to look out for Alex Cho. He's been back for about three games coming off injury. And, you know, both Cho and Masis as well as Hinckley can knock down the three. So I think that's really going to be key for the Springfield team is how do you defend the perimeter? You know, they shoot over 35% from beyond the three. They take a lot of threes. So I think really is going to be can you defend the three well enough because their inside game not necessarily as strong. All right, taking the jump for the engineers today is going to be Kale Cordenoy going alongside Heath Post from the Pride. The starting five for Springfield is Colin Lindsay, Jake Ross, Daryl Costa, Noah Cummings, and Heath Post uh, for MIT. Alex Cho, Matas Mussis, Ian Hinckley, uh, Kale Corduroy and Dan Pillsbury. Yep. And we are ready for tip off here in Blake Arena. Kind of surprised not to see Giannis Hasaveraglau in the starting lineup. I mean, he'd started the last about four or five games. Potentially, we could see him off the bench, but you know, MIT coach Larry Anderson really known for mixing up those lineups, trying, to find, trying to find the right combination. Cummings dishes off to Lindsay. Now to Jake Ross at the top of the key. Looking for a man across to Heath Post. Pump fakes. And the left-hand corner takes a shot. Heath Post, it is good. And Springfield has an early 2-0 lead in this game. Great shot there from Heath Post. Yeah, you know, that's what Heath Post does so well. I mean, he can really, he's turned into an all-around shooter. He can go inside. He can shoot from the outside. He, his mid-range game might be among the best in the country, especially in this region. I mean, he's pretty much automatic if you give him any space. Cho dishes off to Pillsbury. Now off to Hinckley in the corner. Back to the top of the key to Cordenoy. Now over to the right to... Mussies Cho from three contested no good rebound Heath Post that's what the Pride are going to have to do is they're going to have to defend on the perimeter Cho and Mussies especially loves the outside shot Costa over the post at the top of the key Post dribbles in passes off to Cummings sets the screen Cummings at the top of the key now dribbling around dribbles in passes to the left off to Costa back in down to Post in the corner Post pump fix drives in and Cummings takes the layup it is good and Springfield with a couple great offensive possessions to start this game. Now, that was a great find by Heath Post right there, showing he's more than just a scorer. He it was a great pass, and Cummings, great job moving without the ball to get open. Cho takes another three. It is no good. Cho has really been throwing him up uh, early in this game, just hasn't gotten it to fall yet. Jake Ross now yep. dribbles in to I th Cummings. I think that's because MIT knows if they're going to beat the Springfield team, they only average 71 points per game, does MIT. They're going to need a score, and they're going to need the points and bunches. That's how you get them with open threes. Cummings dribbles in, loses the ball, out of bounds, Springfield ball. And Grant Miller is going to check in for the Engineers. He will be replacing number 21, Kale Cordenoy. And Costa will be taking the inbound for Springfield. Grant Miller also adding size, 6'8", sophomore out of Parkridge, Illinois. So, you know, trying to get maybe a little more length on Keith Post. Trey Ross takes a three in the face of Miller. It is good. Jake Ross with, is on the board with his first three of the game. Springfield up to a 7-0 lead in this game. You know, and sometimes you just got to tip your cap to Jake Ross. I mean, we saw it last week to start the game against Emerson. I mean, he was hitting shots, and they weren't just your average jump shots. I mean, they were tough, contested, in-your-face shots. Miller open passes in towards Mussies. 
Back up to Cho at the top of the key. Calling for a play, pick is set by Miller. Cho takes another three, his third attempt of the game. Once again, no good. Rebound knocked around, uh, and it is a jump ball over to Mussies in for the layup, and it is good. And MIT is now on the board. It's a good job by Miller right there, staying with the play, being able to win that rebound back, and Mossis was basically wide open underneath. Cummings driving in, draws the, f draws the foul, and... Yeah, it looked like that was a block on number 21, Kale Cordenoy. Excuse me, that was... Pillsbury and you know Pillsbury had position but the problem was he was in that restricted arc. Noah Cummings will be taking the first free throws of the game for either team. Springfield looking to take an 8-2 lead early in this one with this first free throw. It is good and Giannis Hakaveraglau from Athens, Greece has checked in for Miller who now is a foul. Very quick stint on the floor for Miller. Played just about a minute. Kind of surprised to see him come out as, you know, he did, although picked up that foul, also did some good things right there. I mean, you know, he did a good job on that offensive rebound. He also has the only two point. He, he's part of the reason why MIT got their only basket so far. Cummings, second free throw was good. Three pointer from Hinckley is no good. Rebounded by Cummings. Now off to Jake Ross, you dribbling know, towards the left side of the court. MIT firing away early from three in. So far, 0 for 4. It's really not working out for them. Colin Lindsay, great pass in the middle, and the layup is no good. Rebounded from MIT. Now dribbling up the court for the engineers. Off to Cho for the layup. Foul is drawn, and Alex Cho, great job to draw the foul there in the paint, and he will be heading to the line. Yeah, I know. Cho was able to get out in transition off the missed basket, and, you know, he's not someone who's necessarily known for his ability to drive to the basket, but... You know, the three-point game isn't working. Maybe it's time to try to start something new. His first free throw is now up and good. Springfield now has a six-point lead as Cho will look at his second free throw. It is good. Colin Lindsay now dribbling. Er, excuse me, Noah Cummings dribbling up, dribbling up the court for Springfield to the right. Loses his dribble. But, uh, takes it out to Ross, now to Heath Post at the top of the key, over to the left to Lindsay, down into the corner now to Ross, loses the ball, MIT will take possession. And you know, this is a game for Springfield that this MIT team, normally kind of a powerhouse in the new MAC, especially in men's basketball, they've been, it's been a number of years since they've really struggled to the tune that they have this year, you know, 10 and 12, 3 and 8 in the new MAC. Haka Veraglau dribbling in, takes a shot from the key, and it is good. Giannis Hakaveraglau is now on the board, off the bench. Nice mid-range jump shot by Hakaveraglau. Kind of surprised we didn't see him get the start today. You know, he started the last three or four games, but head coach Larry Anderson maybe trying something different. But Hakaveraglau is going to be, need to be someone who has a big game if this MIT team wants to pull the upset. Cummings dribbling around, now being guarded by Hakaveraglau over to Post. Dribbling in towards the free throw line. Post takes a shot. It is up, no good. Rebound being dribbled around, got by Jake Ross, and what a job by Jake Ross to grab the rebound and draw a foul. Jake Ross is going to be heading to the line. And that's what Jake Ross does so well. You know, everyone knows he can score the basketball, but he's probably the most underrated passer on the Springfield team, but also right there, never gives up on a play, crashes the offensive glass super aggressively, and earns himself a trip to the line. He does about everything you could possibly ask for in a basketball player. His first shot is up. It is good. You know, no and substitutions being made for other teams. When you talk to Charlie Brock about what Jake Ross has done so well, it's not just how good of a player he is as a scorer, but how he's really developed into kind of an all-around basketball player. He's not just someone who can score only. He can score, he can defend, he can rebound, he can pass. Like He, he does everything, and that's what's made him probably the best all-around player in the history of Springfield College. Haka passing out now to Ma Masis. Over to Pillsbury, dribbling around at the top of the key. Over to Hinckley. Costa able to knock the ball away, but rebounded. Macy's down into Haka Veraglau. Passes out into the corner. Over to Hinckley. Puts the shot up. No good. Rebound. Jake Ross. And good. now he's dribbling up the court. Good help side defense by Ross right there. Put a lot of pressure on Hinckley. And Hinckley just had to throw kind of an awkward shot. Heath Post with a shot. Uh... From the paint, it being guarded, and it is good. Springfield's now up 13-6 to with 15 minutes left in the first half. Haka Veraglau takes up a shot. In and out, no good. Rebound goes to Cho. Hinkley from three in the corner. No good. Rebound, Heath Post. 
you know, once again, the three-point struggles have been well documented for MIT, still yet to hit. Jake Ross took a three, no good. Rebound goes out to Lindsay in the corner, back out to Post at the top of the key. Good and job. Springfield will reset the offense. This is a good job by Lindsay to track it down right there. And you know, the Springfield team, they've been ultra aggressive early. And you gotta love that. Daryl Costa with some moves, puts up a three, no good. Rebound, show. And MIT will reset their offense, going for anything on offense, just about. Now dribbling in is Mussies. Bound to the corner to Hakaveraglau. Hakaveraglau was able to draw the foul, and Hakaveraglau will be heading to the line. You know, that has to be a matchup now that Lindsay has two fouls, depending on who's guard, guarding Hakaveraglau. He is 6'6", has some size on Lindsay, and I really have been surprised that they haven't tried to expose that mismatch more. Hakaveraglau now going for his first free throw of two. It is up, no good. Springfield's gonna make a couple of subs. Trey Witter and Deontay Sandefair now into the game for Colin Lindsay and Daryl Costa. You know, one of the guys we talked about in the depth of Springfield is Trey Witter. He's really developed into that very nice six man off the bench. Really provides a good boost of energy off the bench. Not just offensively either, his defensive game has improved greatly from last year. And then Deontay Sandefair, I mean, he's the lockdown defensive guy. When you need a stop, and you need to stop on the other team's best player, you're putting Deontay Sandifer in the game. Hockeberglau's second free throw is good. Cummings dribbling at the top of the key, guarded tightly by Mussis, over to Sandifer. Looking for an open man, dribbles into the right, puts up a shot, no, I'm sorry, put, passes to Cummings in the corner, three-pointer's up and good, Noah Cummings with a three-pointer from the corner. That was a great find by Sandifer, drove pulled the defense into the lane, and then Noah Cummings was wide open, corner three, and Cummings was able to convert. Haka Veraglau from the free throw line, shot is no good, rebounded by Jake Ross. And the offensive woes continue for MIT. Yeah, it's not been a great start. This is a team that only averages 71 points a game, much less than Springfield, who averages almost 85. Deontay Santafer in the corner, dribbles in, drives, layup is up, no good, rebound, tossed around, foul is drawn. And it's going to be an on-the-floor foul against MIT. Springfield will be inbounding the ball. Looks like that was Dan Pillsbury. That's his second, so would be surprised to see him stay in. They're picking up foul number two, but that was a great job by Sandifer. He's listed on the roster at six feet tall. I mean, he's battling against kids who are four, five, six inches taller than him. And he's still able to come down with the re or at least attempt to come down with the rebound and draw a foul. Pass goes out to Santa Fe, dribbling in, now out to Trey Witter for three. No good, rebound goes out to Haga Veraglau. Also, Harper Niven has checked into this game, replacing Heath Post. Love the story of Harper Niven. Ju junior on the basketball team, first year on the basketball team, tried out this year, made it, and he's really been a key contributor for this Pride team. Haka Veraglau puts up a layup, no good, rebound is Jake Ross. He's now dribbling up. Pass the three-foot line, driving. From the free throw line, puts up a shot, it is good. The fadeaway from Jake Ross goes in. Springfield has a 10 point lead with 12.55 left in the first half. Jake Ross pulling moves out of the, his bag of tricks and then you know that little fadeaway, I mean, that's almost unstoppable. Ross with seven points on the board already. And Alex Cho looks for a shot. Haga Veraglau is wide open. He takes an easy layup and MIT now has nine points. You know, MIT though, so even with that basket, just three of 11, 0 of five from three. I mean, it's been, it's been a struggle for this MIT team to get going, and I mean, that's kind of been the story of their season. You know, they lost last time out. When they lost to Wheaton 66-63, they lost because their offense simply could not produce almost anything. Jake Ross put up a shot, it was no good. Rebound goes out to MIT. Hinkley with the pass from Mussies. Over now, uh, the pass is intercepted. Trey Witters now going up the court, takes a rebound from the right side. I'm sorry, a shot, no good. Rebound goes out to Sandefair, out to Harper Niven from three. Now to Jake Ross, now to Trey Witter, dribbles in, takes a nice layup. What a move that was there from Trey Witter to get to the basket. Timeout called, and MIT is going to take their first timeout. You know, Witter missed his initial shot, and once again we see Sandifer come flying in with the offensive board, is able to save it, and then Witter makes a nice drive to the basket. And, you know, right now this is exactly what you wanted if you're head coach Charlie Brock. You don't want to let down in a game against the team Usually MIT is one of the cream of the crop in the new Mac. You know, they've been a nationally ranked powerhouse for the last number of years, including last year. I mean, they came into Blake Arena, got upset as the number six team in the country. They were still an unbelievable team. 
against a team that this year is 10 and 12, 3 and 8 in the New Mag. They've suffered some pretty bad losses. I mean, this is a team for Springfield that they know they probably should beat, but it's very easy to have a letdown against these types of teams. Springfield taking care of business earlier in this one. Jake Ross with seven points. Noah Cummings with six. The big scorer for MIT has been Haka Veragla with five coming off the bench. And Julian Manyaka is going to be checking in for MIT once this timeout is over. Yeah, and you know, also for MIT, it's just been a struggle to get any type of bat, to any really any type of offense going. You know, they are 3 of 4 from the line, but 3 of 12 from the field, 0 of 5 from 3. I mean, we saw Alex Trell within the first three minutes put up three threes and not, couldn't get it to fall. And I mean, they're, if you're MIT, you're going to need those shots to fall if you want any chance of pulling the upset today. Alex Tro is going to be taking the inbound for MIT, coming out of the timeout, looking to get any sort of momentum, especially on offense. We also see Robert Baum into the game for the first time for the Pride. Missed the last couple games. It's a nice person to add back to the rotation as he also gives more time on the bench, you know, a little more rest for guys like Noah Cummings and Trey Witter. Cho dribbling around from beyond the three-point arc, passes in. And a foul is drawn after the pass to Hakavergal. That's going to be a charge, an offensive foul against MIT. Not what you wanted. That's not what you wanted from your offense. Especially not coming right out of the timeout. But looked like Hakavergal, when he was trying to get the inside position on Niven, kind of hooked his arm around the body of Niven, and that's going to be an offensive foul almost every time. Sandifer now over to Niven, back down to Post, who's re-entered in this game, dribbling in towards the right out to Sandifer. From Baum from beyond three. It is good. Robert Baum just off the bench hits a three in Springfield. Now is a 13 point lead. You know, and that's what Robert Baum can do for you off the bench. You know, he has some pretty good range and can hit those shots. So, you know, if he's doing that off the bench, that's really what you need from him is be a decent scorer, play some defense, and give quality minutes off the bench. It really adds to the depth of the Springfield team. Springfield back on offense after the missed three from Massey. Santa Fe over to Niven from three dribbles in. Foul is, no, I'm sorry, travel is called against Niven. That's Springfield's first turnover of the game, and MIT is going to take back over. Yeah, you know, right there, Niven wasn't looked like he had an idea what he wanted to do. Just waited a little too long to start the dribble, but you know, you like the idea that Harper Niven is going to be aggressive. You know, he has size, he has length. It's not a bad thing if he is super aggressive going to the basket, trying to get fouls drawn at least. Rebound from the post goes all the way out to Witter. Now into Santa Fe, dribbling in back out to Witter from beyond three. Witter out to post at the top of the key. Looking for a man back to Witter. Witter, pump fakes, dribbles in, out to po back out to post. Robert Baum going in, post still has the ball, dribbles in towards the free throw line, reaches up, puts up a shot, and it is good. What a drive there from Heath Post. That That's just beautiful by post right there. You know, he did the little, pull the little up and under on Julian Manika, and I mean, Sometimes you just got to tip your cap once again. I mean, the Springfield offense is really clicking on all cylinders right now. Cho looking for a foul after the layup attempt missed. Does not get it. Springfield takes over. Choi Witter driving in. Out to Baum. Takes the layup. It is good. Baum has scored five points off the bench. And Springfield is taking a full commanding lead here. You know, the Springfield offense is clicking on all cylinders, but it starts with their defense. is getting stops. And when Springfield's gotten a chance to get out and run, that's when they've been at their best today. They've done it quite often. Pump fake from Masis out. Manyaka takes a three, no good. Bad shot there, rebounded by Niven. And now Robert Baum's gonna take it up. Once again, MIT still cannot hit from deep. And I mean, it's been, it's been a struggle on offense to put it mildly. Heath Post takes another Heath shot defended Post. by Manyaka, and it is good. Heath Post has taken over the offense now. Eight points on the board for Post. It's been a nice, nicely well-balanced game from the Pride. Ross has seven, Post has eight, Cummings has eight, or excuse me, six. And MIT gets a basket on the, on the layup by Cho. What a drive there from Cho. You know, for MIT, not necessarily a bad idea to maybe try to drive a little more. I mean, clearly it's not working. Especially with the shooting not being you know, good. You know, their perimeter shooting has not been that good. You got to think, maybe try to drive to the basket a little more. It worked on that last play. Trey Witter putting on some moves, puts up a shot, no good, rebound, goes to MIT, Dan Pillsbury, now dribbling to Alex Cho. Over now to Manyaka, takes a three with post in his face, no good, rebound, send a fair. Another, another tough shot there you know, that's MIT. Just, that's just not a great shot if you're MIT, you know, very early in the shot clock, a very rushed shot from three, I mean, hand in your face. 
down 28 to 11. You got to think they want a little better of a shot. Jake Ross and Daryl Costa are going to re-enter this game for Springfield. Also, Grant Miller is going to enter for Haka Baraglau. And the, the five on the Springfield are Santa Fe, Robert Baum, Costa, Post, and Ross. Yeah, it looks like Mussey's taking the ball up. It's like Miller and also Ian Hinckley back in the game. We have not heard that much from Ian Hinckley, who is the leading scorer of MIT. Got to think if they want a chance in this game, he's going to have to be very involved in the He offense. hasn't really been shooting that much either. And pass goes down to Miller, guarded by Ross, back out to Cho at the top of the keep, down in. And a foul is drawn on Pillsbury. He's going to go to the line. I'm sorry, was it on the floor? It was on the floor. So no free throws. MIT will be inbounding after the foul. Miller down low, taking the inbound, passes out. Now into Cho. Down low, MIT with the with the layup, no good on the layup attempt from Pillsbury. That just seems to be a common theme right now. This MIT team just can't get any good shots, and it seems like every shot they're taking pretty much has been a contested three or a contested layup. And you know, it seems like they're just been very stagnant, not moving. Well, on offense, that's what Springfield's done so well is move without the ball, getting open, using screens to get open. MIT kind of needs to do that right now if they want to get back into this. Santa Fe able to draw the foul against Mussies, and Noah Cummings has re-entered this game for Santa Fe. Santa Fe doing a great job off the bench. He provides that energy on the defensive end, but also great offensive rebounding and passing as well. Robert Baum puts up a layup, no good. Rebound cost the Jake Ross with a pump fake in the corner. Back out to Post. Peeth Post for three. Shot is up, no good. Rebound Hinkley. And MIT is going to take back over on offense. Cho dribbling the ball up the court. Stops, pick set from Miller. Cho for three, wide open, no good. That was a deep three there from Cho. Wasn't able to go. You know, Cho is someone who can hit the three, but so far, MIT as a team has just not been, not really finding their mark from range so far. It really seems like this is a team where, like, when Cho goes, the offense goes, because they have been... They have had nothing going so far, and Cho has been putting up a lot of threes. You know, it's surprising. Ian Hinckley has only taken three shots, and he's missed all three of them. But you got to think, he's the guy who leads them in scoring. Why? I don't understand if you're MIT. I think this is when you need to get them, Ian Hinckley especially, more involved in this offense. If you're a guy like Alex Cho, a guy like uh, Modest Me Mises, you gotta look. you got to look to Hinckley a little more, especially with how he performed last time against this exact same Springfield Pride team. Cho on the free throw line now after drawing a foul on a drive. Trey Witter and Colin Lindsay are going to enter for Springfield after the first shot. Not 100% sure what the refs are discussing here. It seems pretty clear that Alex Cho will be going to the line. Some confusion on the court now. It's like potentially a player might be bleeding or something like that. Looks like Noah Cummings is getting Taken tended out. to by the trainers. Looks like potentially could have blood on the jerseys. As well that as Robert Baum. Uh, it looks like it that's looks like they're going to be replacing. Blood. It looks like there's blood on one of their jerseys. So it looks like Colin Lindsay, Trey Witter come back in. So we wait for the refs to sort out the confusion. Springfield up 28-11. to 11, And, I mean, this has been... This is exactly what you want to see if you're Coach Brock coming into a game. You don't want you don't want to yeah you want to put your foot on the pedal and you don't you, you, you don't really want you don't want to really let up either because you want to kind of send a message that this is what this team is that you are the dominant force in the new Mac this year and I mean they have three after today they have three games left two of them are against Babson and WPI two teams that are really right behind you right on your tail in the new Mac. Cho's free, first free throw was good, now going up for his second, and it is also good. And a timeout called by the Engineers. It's a full timeout by Larry Anderson. We'll take it to Springfield up 28-13 with 7.02 left.
Welcome back into Blake Arena, Springfield with a commanding 28 to 13 lead. MIT recently called timeout. They are still Larry, getting their message sorted out. Larry Anderson pulling the Charlie Sullivan tactic using every last second of the timeout. And after a start like this, Kevin, what do you think is being said in that huddle? You know, I really think the problem for MIT is you see it on offense. I mean, they're 0 of 9 from 3, and they've gotten some decent looks. Granted, they haven't fallen, but you also have to look at the fact that they've been very stagnant on offense. You know, you see Springfield, especially on the fast break, they're moving. They're setting screens. You have guys moving a lot without the ball. When MIT has the ball, they're not really doing much of that. You just see them kind of standing around. They're kind of just like very stagnant on offense. I'm not 100% sure why the refs haven't started play yet. Head coach Charlie Brock. With more confusion going on on the court, it seems. You it know, looks I like mean, looked like they had signaled for the end of the timeout, and MIT was still getting coaching instruction from the sideline. I yeah, mean, and Larry Anderson was talking to Cho and Hinckley. You know, I think the message, though, for MIT has to be has to be just move the ball on offense. Try to move without the ball. I mean, that's how you're going to get open shots is moving without the ball, setting screens, things like that. And then defensively, I mean, the problem is MIT has missed so many shots. When you get, when the Springfield team gets out in the fast break, they're a very hard team to stop because they not only are they skilled, but they are extremely fast. They pass extremely well. And, I mean, the MIT team has their work cut out for them if they want to come back. Costa now dribbling in towards the free throw line. Drives in. Costa puts up a shot. No good. Rebound uh, from Grant Miller. And MIT will dribble the ball up. Masis taking the ball up. Passes out to Cho. Dribbles in. Cho with another drive. Passes out into the corner. Now back over to Pillsbury driving in. Now Cho to the left-hand corner. Takes up a three. No good. Once again from Cho. Rebound. And Cho will have another chance at three. Let's see if this one goes. It does. The second chance points coming in for MIT. And that is big off of a timeout. You know, right there, that's... Though on the original Cho three, MIT did a great job moving the ball and moving without the ball as well, you know, the quick passing, and that's what's going to get them open looks. And this MIT team, they can get those open looks eventually. The law of averages say they have to fall at some Jake point. Jake Ross puts up a shot, no good, rebound MIT. Now, this is the first time really for like more than a 30-second stretch that we've seen the Springfield offense kind of stagnant. So we're going to see post check back in, but... Cho puts up another three, no good. Rebound gets tossed around, is grabbed by Costa, now off to Witter. And Witter puts up a shot, no good. Rebound being tossed around, put back up, no good. Rebound, Hinkley passes out to Masis. You know, would have liked to see Witter just take it all the way there. You know, he is a 92% free throw shooter. So even if he gets fouled, I mean, it's he's two, been seems pretty, like two free points. He's pretty much been automatic from the line this year. Cho with another three, no, pump fakes, dribbles in. Great move there, passes out. What was that pass? But it goes out to the corner to Masis, and it's good. Sort of a weird sequence of offense from MIT, but it works out in the end. Yeah, and you know, this MIT team kind of building a run. They were down 28 to 11. They're now in an 8-0 run, and you know, they, they've finally started. It looks like they're moving the ball a little better on offense, but also the Springfield team offensively, they've become kind of like what MIT has been, very stagnant, not really moving a lot without the ball. And bad pass from Witter is intercepted by Cho. It's a two-on-one, three-on-one. Cho dishes off to Hinkley. Hinkley puts up a layup, and Hinkley is now on the board. Timeout called by Charlie Brock. I think that's a good timeout by Charlie Brock right there. You really got to stop the momentum of this MIT offense. But, I mean, you know, we finally, for the first time, we've seen MIT do something on offense. I mean, they had 11 points in the first 12 minutes or so. They have 10 points in the last three minutes. It's MIT, the engineers are now on a 10-0 run as Springfield's lead has decreased pretty noticeably and you have to feel that Charlie Brock is going to be make, asking for a lot of changes and going back to that original sort of offense in this huddle here. You know, to me this is very reminiscent of that Coast Guard game. Springfield jumped out very early, got a big lead, and then all of a sudden they let Coast Guard creep back into it, make it, give Coast Guard an opportunity and Coast Guard just hung around long enough to tie it at the end and I mean, of course, we saw one of the best performances of all time, probably the best performance of all time by any basketball player ever in Jake Ross at Springfield College, scoring 55. The second highest point total for any college basketball player, Division One, Two, Three, any level this year. Certainly an impressive resume from Jake Ross there, but Springfield's going to have to rely on more than just him, especially yeah. in this stretch of play when you have teams like WPI, teams like Babson coming up in your schedule. Absolutely. That, that, that sort of play isn't going to cut it. And, you know, it's games like these against teams like MIT who have been 
uh, struggling more than I think we expected, where it's like you really got to show what you're made of. You can't just rely on Jake Ross. Yeah, and you know, I also think, though, this is a good teaching moment for not only Ro Ross and Heath, but for the younger guys, guys like Costa, Cummings, Lindsey. Sandifer, they're all going to be back next year. Harper Niven, Robert Baum. Those, those are going to be the guys that are going to be relied on next year when Jake and Heath aren't here. So, I mean, these are the type of moments that are going to test them. When a team goes on a run to respond, how do you respond to it? Costa dribbling in, puts up a layup, no good. And another seemed like a forced shot there from Costa. I it mean, was a layup, but he had, was pretty tightly was, guarded. That's one of those where I think Costa just has to go up stronger. You know, I think he was expecting contact, kind of pulled up a little late. And he ended up getting just kind of short-arming the layup a bit. That's where you just have to go up strong. You can't expect to get hit right away. I mean, if he goes up strong, the worst thing that happens is he gets fouled. Foul is called against Santa Fe, and MIT will be inbounding the ball after the floor foul. And timeout is taken by the engineers. Springfield now up 28 to 21, a seven point lead for the Pride with 421 left in the first half. Springfield got jumped out to a 28 to 13 lead. Hasn't, has had a pretty stagnant offense, and it's been a roller coaster ride for both teams, certainly. I mean, I think we've seen Springfield, they had their hot stretch, kind of cooled down a bit, and MIT, they really responded well, actually, and I mean, they're only down seven and with the ball. I think right now, though, coming out of this timeout, I just think for Springfield is, the, one, the ability to get stops, but two, it's also being able, when you get those stops, be able to run out on offense because right now, you know, they just, you know, I feel like if they see one or two shots go in, that can get them going. In this last four minutes, if you can extend the lead back out, that'll be huge for your confidence going into the locker room. Grant Miller will be down low, taking the inbound for MIT. Passes out and pass is intercepted. Daryl Costa going up the court to the right side. Another four shot, no good. Rebound and there, Higley and Costa I mean, did there, not go. There, there, there is a lot of contact right there by Modest Mossis. I mean, he initiated the contact with Costa and Charlie Brock, rightfully so, not too happy on the sideline. Really giving the ref an earful as the ref came up. Miller the floor. passes out to Hinky. Hinky goes up for a layup, blocked by Post. What a block from Heath Post. The rebound goes up to Cummings, now out to Ross, dribbling in. Jake Ross pulls up a layup. Foul is called. Jake Ross will be going to the free throw line. The MIT bench wanted the charge right there. Not sure how you can get a charge call when you're not even in the spot. I mean, Cho. Feet weren't set, and I mean that's if your feet aren't set, you're not in the spot. You're never getting a charge call. That was an ex that was exactly what Springfield needed: the electric block by Heath Post against Hinkley, and then to go out to Cummings to Ross, and to draw that foul is what Springfield needed as Ross makes his first free no, throw, and Springfield has scored for the first time in the first few minutes. After that, you know, play Cho seems very unhappy. You know, the body language isn't great. That's not what you want to see if you're MIT. This is, you for the first time, your offense seemingly found a little bit of rhythm. And all of a sudden, you, you can't really afford to like hang your shoulders and just kind of mope around after a call doesn't go your way. Because if you do that, then you're going to let it affect the rest of the game. And if you do that, then, I mean, you can't do that, especially against a team like Springfield, who's number 20 in the country. Robert Baum has checked into the game. Cho takes a two-pointer. It is good. Good mid-range shot there from Cho. Finally, what he had needed you know, after struggling all game. If you're Costa right there, you need to do a better job of coming off that screen. I mean, he tried to go under it. And you... You just can't afford to leave a guy like Cho wide open. I mean, he struggled from beyond the arc. Backcourt is called against Springfield. It seemed like the ball was tipped from MIT. Not too sure what it, that call it, is. It looked like Heath Post touched it originally just before it went back and then touched it again beyond the line. So, I mean, that's kind of a tough play right there, especially if you're Post. But, you know, the Springfield team needs a good last three and a half minutes if they... Good you know, look. Try to get any momentum. Good look from Cho into Pillsbury. Re layup attempt is no good. Rebound goes out to Heath Post. Now dribbling up the ball up the left side of the court. Pillsbury. Post. Pillsbury just got nothing to go so far. Robert Baum for three. No good. Rebound Cho. <laughs> Seems like a bit of a forced shot by Baum right there. Very quick early in the shot clock. Not really a necessary shot. Grant Miller goes up for a layup. Attempt is good. And Springfield now only has a five point lead as Robert Baum. No, we, we haven't seen the lead the this low in since the beginning of the game. Really since the first like six or seven minutes of the game. Pass is almost intercepted by Cho, gotten by Costa, now dribbles out. Jake Ross puts up a three, no good. Rebound goes out to Deontay Santa Fair. Springfield will reset its offense. 
Uh, Sandifer again, I mean, do, doing a great job getting his team extra possessions when they really need the extra possessions right now. Heath Post, pump fake, goes up for two. Shot is up and is good. Heath Post with a great mid-range shot, some good moves to shake off the defender. You know, like we said at the beginning, Heath Post does that as well as anybody, I believe, in the entire country. You know, just a little dribble move, gets his man in the air, and I mean, Heath Post is as good as they come in the mid-range. Pass is stolen by Springfield. Foul is called against, I believe, MIT. Looks like that's Pillsbury, and that's going to be Pillsbury's third. So You'll got, have got. to see if they're going to sub here. I mean, being three fouls in the first half is, is certainly not good for one of your starters, especially one of your big men. I mean, it doesn't seem like Larry Anderson is, inclined, is <laughs> inclined right now to pull him, but, I mean, it's also a very risky strategy at this point. Springfield is now in the bonus as that was MIT's seventh foul, so Costa will be shooting one and one here. Oh, for Costa, he's had a couple opportunities where maybe it would have helped him. You know, he's more known as a three-point shooter, but he's just got to go up stronger, especially going up for layups. Costa's first shot is good. He will be shooting another one, and Springfield now with an eight-point lead, 33-25 to 25 with 208 in the first half. You know, for Springfield right here, if you get this second free throw to go, and then you can have a good last two minutes, I think that's would help having some momentum going into the second half. For the second free throw is good. MIT, Alex Tro taking the ball up the court. Seen as an isolation play right here. Grant Miller goes to set a screen. Cho drives in, passes out to Mike. Over to Grant Miller. Back over to Pillsbury. Goes up for a layup. Asks for a foul. No good. And the, the second chance points there from MIT are good. And right there, I mean, Post went for the block, but no one else was there to box out. And I mean, you got someone else has to be there. If Post is going for the block, that really takes out your probably your, one of your top rebounding options. Costa putting up some moves, dribbles in, passes out to Cummings beyond the three. Cummings dribbling in towards the free throw line. Post for three from the left hand corner. It is good. Heath Post has put up a three pointer to put Springfield back into a double digit lead. Post now with 13, and you know. Last Saturday, we saw Jake Ross was really the star of the game. And, you know, we saw at times Post really struggled towards the end of that Emerson game. But he came out, had a solid game on Wednesday at Wheaton. And then tonight, today, I mean, he's the leading scorer for the Pride right now. He's been arguably the most consistent source of offense at 13. Cho dribbling the ball, putting some moves on Daryl Costa. Still dribbling. Great. Passes out. That was a great job. That was a great job by Costa right there. Great defense. Picked up by... If Cho puts up another shot, and it is good, MIT is now eight points away. Something I love, though, is in the initial defense by Costa on the perimeter. I mean, you know, he's letting Cho know that, like, his reputation isn't as the best defender, but he was going to make it difficult, and that's what he did. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat. I mean, Cho found an inch of space, and he was able to make the shot. Jake Ross with a couple spin moves, puts up a shot, no good. And it looks like MIT is going to go for the last shot here. As there's 27 seconds remaining in the first half, Alex Cho you know, looks tripping like the ball, taking it very looks cautiously. Like, looks like about three seconds, le three seconds difference. You got to think MIT doesn't really want to give Springfield a whole lot of time. A great, a great shot at potentially getting the last shot. Cho still dribbling, hasn't really made a move yet. Nine seconds left. Cho after the screen from Miller takes a, a free throw shot, no point, no good. Four seconds left. Heath Post dribbling up. Pass goes out to Santa Fe. Santa Fe is going to have to get a shot up quickly. Puts up a layup. It is no good. Not sure if it would have counted either way. Looked but like, Springfield. Looked like it would have counted based on the ref's reaction. But kind of surprised. That last possession looked like number 22, Grant Miller, set a screen. And Could have gotten a foul there. Not, kind of surprised we didn't see an offensive foul. I mean, Costa was trying to go around, and Miller kept kind of turning the hip, moving on it. But either way, Springfield in a definitely a back and forth first half, I would say. I think MIT is... Uh, Tough shooting luck in the first part of that half really, really might be the difference here. I mean, if yeah, they can I get mean, a couple of those shots to fall, we're looking at a different but story here. The thing is, though, a lot of those three-pointers, they were a couple open looks that just didn't fall, but a lot of them were very quick shots. Very forced. Hands, hands in their face, and especially from Alex Cho. I mean, we saw he hit one, three, but he's one of seven from beyond the arc. And then you have Ian Hinckley, your best player, who averages 19 and a half a game with five shot attempts and he's only hit one but he hasn't really been his guys aren't finding him for open looks so you got to think that 
trying to get it to guys like Hinkley, Masis, and I'm kind of surprised we didn't see as much Hakaveraglau. He came in, had five quick points, then we didn't see him again. Yeah, so Hakaveraglau is a guy that you really want on there, on the floor for you. I he's, mean, he's the third leading scorer for this MIT team, so kind of surprised we didn't see more of him. But wraps up the first half. Springfield leads 37-29. We'll be back in about 15 minutes or so. Kevin Sachs and Daniel Kern, be back.
Welcome back inside Blake Arena. My name is Daniel Curran alongside Kevin Sachs. We're ready to get the second half underway. Springfield has a 37 to 29 lead. Kevin, what do you think was said in each of the locker rooms at halftime? You know, I think for MIT it was continue what you were doing at the end of that half. You know, their defense really tightened up. Springfield started off hot, only ended up shooting 13 of 35, 37% from the field. And offensively, defensively, MIT did a great job moving, doing a good job of limiting the good shots for Springfield. But offensively, they were super stagnant to start. They started moving the ball a little more. They started getting open shots, but I mean, they're, I they, still think for MIT, unless the threes start to fall, you got to get away from that a little bit. I mean, two of 13, a lot of forced threes, especially by guys like Alex Cho. I mean, he was, at one point, he was just chucking them up. I think I'm, I'm MIT has to work on getting better shots, getting more open, moving around more. And yeah, you know, and for Springfield, I think just try to start moving the ball a little better. And, you know, it starts with getting stops. Once they stop getting stops, on the defensive end, it really prevented them from being able to get out and run. So I think you're going to see Springfield try to tighten up the defense a little bit because when they're able to get out and run, I think that's when this team is honestly most dangerous. Alex Cho dribbling in towards the free throw line, takes a layup. Another good drive there from Alex Cho. He's done most of the work on offense from the shooting to the driving, the scoring, everything. And You know, I think that's what Cho has to do, though, is drive to the basket. You know, clearly the outside shot wasn't working all that well. You know, drive to the basket, get mid-range jump shots. That's really what worked for him for the most part in that first half. Costa putting on some moves. He drives of his own. Foul is called against the Engineers. And it looks like it's going to be an on-the-floor foul. Springfield will be inbounding here. You know, I like that take, though, by Costa drawing the foul on, on Cho. That's also Cho's second. So, you know, if he picks up a third foul very early on, they already have Dan Pillsbury, who's still playing with three fouls. Kind of surprised that they are going to him it's got to seem like he's walking on eggshells on defense here. Costa. Absolutely. The the Passes out to Cummings to the left. Down low to Jake Ross. Double teamed here. Dribbling in. Jake Ross back out towards Costa. Back out to Jake Ross. Wide open for three. Jake Ross puts up a three. No good. Rebound goes out to MIT. Cho grabs the board. You know, they got the look they wanted right there. They just were unable to convert. Cho with another forced three. No good. Rebound Springfield. Cho looking for a foul there. Wasn't able to get it. Costa now out to Cummings, back out to Ross beyond the three, dribbles in. Jake Ross puts up a layup and no good. Good look from Ross. Passes intercepted by Costa and Springfield's going to reset the offense here. It's a great job by Costa right there, not giving up on that possession. You know, he's able to come back with the steal for the pride. Seems like even when they're getting good looks, they just aren't able to convert him at this point. Jake Ross puts up another layup, no good on the double team. Yeah, Grant Miller grabs the rebound. See Ross looking just a little frustrated right now, but. You know, Pillsbury was also able, not even able to play really defense on that possession. I mean, got, would not be surprised to see them try to drive at Cho or Pillsbury, try to get them into more foul trouble. Cho dribbling out, passes out to Masis, takes up three, no good. And rebound, forced around, and it's going to be off Heath Post. Yep. Red Miller and Heath Post were both going for it, it looks like. Post tried to get it off of Miller, but it looks like we're going to see number 11, Muna Nawana, in for the first time. And... Fun fact about Muna Nawana, his brother Nacho Nawana was actually the new MAC Defensive Player of the Year a couple years ago. I mean, his brother was a very much kind of Deontay Sandifer type player. Wasn't really known for his offense, but defensively it was unbelievable. Passes tipped around and rebounded by Cho. Cho being teamed in the corner. Takes a force three, no good once again. I mean, you got to question these looks that Cho's been taking here. Yeah, you know, I mean, hand in his face, not very good look at the basket even. I mean... And far out, too. Heath Post being double teamed, grips up a layup, no good. Rebound back to Post, puts up another Heath shot. Post. What a job by Heath Post on the double team there Thanks. to grab his own rebound Absolutely. and get the second chance points. Great job by Post just to stay with the play. You know, a lot of guys, they missed that first shot. They're going to give up on the play right there. Post did a great job staying with it. And he ended up getting a pretty easy layup. Cho with another drive, another layup for Cho. He's done an excellent job of driving and getting those sort of layup and easy points. You know, the problem for MIT, though, has been it's literally been only Alex Cho. And, I mean, they have someone like Ian Hinckley who has been almost non-existent, only with two points today. Cummings loses the ball. Cho with a reach from Costa dribbling in, passes out to Pillsbury down low being double teamed, Moana in the corner, back to Cho, wide open in the corner, takes a three off the edge of the backboard, no good. Costa now dribbling up, passes out to Ross beyond three, Ross driving in, over to Cummings in the corner, Noah Cummings with a corner three, no good, rebound is to Cummings, goes to down low, takes a layup, no good, bobbled around and grabbed by Hinkley. 
You know, the Springfield offense just can't seem to find anything to go. But once again, Alex Cho, I mean, there's some days it's just not your day from the outside. It might be time to stop shooting from the, from the corner or from, pretty much from beyond the arc in general. Cho passes out towards Pillsbury. Pillsbury takes up a layup, no good. Rebound popped around, goes to post. And Heath Post is going to set up the offense here. You know, and a shot like that might be why Alex Cho is shooting so much, though. I mean, it really, they, they haven't gotten anything consistent out of anyone but him. Costa dribbling in towards the left, back out to Post, beyond three, back to Costa in the corner. Costa dribbling down into Post, guarded by Cho. Post dribbling out, ball is knocked around. Post bets it back, takes a mid range shot with five seconds on the shot clock. It is good. Heath Post has put himself. Back on the board for the second half, 17 points now for the big man. Post and Cho tied for the game lead, with game high with 17 apiece. I mean, Post has been the most consistent source of offense, even when it seems like Springfield struggled. It's been Post. Cho puts up a layup, no good, and rebound goes to Nuwana, and Nuwana has put himself on the board with the second chance points. Springfield has a six-point lead now with 15 minutes to go. Um, very much like the Coast Guard game, it just seems like Springfield cannot pull away, but in terms of that game, it was a very high-scoring game. This game, more of a defensive-minded, kind of very Fowler is pace. called against Cho. That's number three. I mean, he's going to have to be careful. You pick up a fourth foul, and you're basically playing Matador defense where you can't really make any contact. Trey Witter and Deontay Santafe are going to check in for the pride here, replacing Daryl Costa as well as Colin Lindsay. You know, now, without Cho, and I'm very interested to see who's going to take over for this MIT team. Yeah, I think maybe Hakavera. Hakavera Glau just entered the game, so we'll have to see if he can get himself going. You know, he was the guy. He had five quick points, but didn't really get that many minutes. Trey Witter backs out in the corner, back to post, but down low. What a look from Post into Cummings, and Cummings is able to draw the foul. He will be going to the line. And you know, that was that's what Charlie Brock wants to see. That was unbelievable passing job. Excellent. By everyone by post. on the floor, you know, guys swinging the ball all around, and you know, Cummings found himself almost wide open. Really forced Ian Hinckley having to cause the foul to prevent the easy layup. Cummings now on the line, puts up a shot. First free throw is no good for Noah Cummings. Cummings with six points on the game has actually it's a pretty solid game so far. I mean, you know, as a freshman, he's really earned his way as the starting point guard for this team. Can't hit either, and I mean, seems like for Springfield, they just can't find anything to drop in the basket right now. That was a tough break for Springfield, not able to hit those free throws. Haka Veriglau dishes off to Pillsbury. Pillsbury at the top of the key over to Hinkley. Hinkley back to Nuana. Nuana now dribbling around at the top. Guarded by Heath Post, picks up his dribble, goes off to Pillsbury, out to Hinkley now. Out to Haka Veriglau. Haka Veriglau guarded by Cummings. Five seconds on the shot clock. The foul is called offensive and MIT with another tough turnover. That is just not what you want to see there yeah. for Larry Anderson. I think it was Graham Miller who is going to get replaced by Cordenoy. I mean, you know, kind of surprised that then in the first half we saw Miller set a screen where he literally mo was moving along with Costa to prevent him from getting around the screen. Didn't get called for that, but got called for that one where it looked like still looked like an illegal screen, but didn't look like as much contact there. Trey Witter taking the ball up, dishes, spins around, nooses his dribble, back down to post, down low to post, Heath Post with a shot. Great look from Ross over to post down low, and Post able to finish on the layup guarded. Yeah, and not much Pillsbury could do right there for MIT. I mean, Post, Especially has, in foul the, trouble. post has the size advantage, plus ha in foul trouble, I mean, Literally wasn't anything he could do. Hinkley goes out for three, no good. Hinkley putting up a shot for what seems like the first time in a that, while. That, that's really the first clean look he's actually had at a three as well. I mean, he really hasn't had many clean looks. And a foul is going to go against Springfield here. It's like the foul is on Sandifer. Not 100% sure what the foul was for. It looked like that'll be his second. Looks like a lot of banging of bodies down low, but for Springfield once again, you know, this is the time up by eight that if. You want it. Springfield kind of wants to try to pull away, try to really leave no doubt that they're going to win this game and not have a super close game, but really been unable to do that. Haka Veriglau dribbling around. Ball is stolen by Santa Fe. Santa Fe getting guarded quickly by Hinkley. Goes up for a layup. No good. Rebound Post. Post will draw a foul. Huge second point, second chance opportunity for Springfield. Heath Post is going to be shooting some free throws now. And it looks like Haka Veriglau on the foul. And I mean, Heath Post doing a great job running the floor. He's got 19 of the Pride's 43 today, and I mean, 
you know, we see this MIT offense has really gone stagnant since Alex Cho came out. Not surprised to see Cho and Masi's coming back in. What you really don't want to see from MIT here is Post hits his first foul. Already five fouls on the team for the Engineers. That is absolutely the last thing you want to see uh, when you're already trying to fight back in this game, trying to avoid going down by double digits here. See Nawana, Hornoy, and Hakavarigua come right back out. And, I mean, kind of interesting to see. I mean, not really all, all that the bench guys for this MIT team, you know, they come in, two minutes later they're back out. Must, for them it must be so hard, like it's super hard if you're coming off the bench to really get in the rhythm. That's why what we watch Trey Witter do and consistently be able to put up good games, it's not that easy. If you you don't never know when you're going in. You know you're gonna go in, but it could be for three minutes at a time, seven minutes at a time. You never, It's never gonna be the same every game. Foul is called against Springfield as Cho is Dribbling in, it's going to be a floor foul. The second foul for the Pride in the half looks like it's looks going like it's to be on Witter. Looks like it's going to be on Witter, his first. And the Engineers will be inbounding this ball. Grant Miller is going to take it down low. Passes in to Ma Masis, now dribbles in. Passes to Pillsbury, back out to Hinckley. Hinckley guarded, takes a shot from around the free throw line. Foul is called against Cummings. So it looks like Ian Hinckley will be going to the line here. Yeah, it didn't look like a whole lot of contact. It looked like Cummings just got him kind of on the shoulder. Well, it's kind of an unnecessary foul, though. I mean, that's something as a freshman you're going to learn that, like, if you have the hand in the face, you don't really need to do much more than that. I mean, if he makes the shot, he makes the shot. But especially in closer games, you don't really want to give any team free opportunities at the line. Hinkley hits his first free throw, second one incoming. Springfield now has a nine-point lead. And the lead is staying nine as the shot misses. Rebound goes to Heath Post. Yep. Drew passes out to Cummings. Heath Post has an unbelievable day for the Pride so far. He's up to 21 points and 14 rebounds. Outstanding. I mean, he's been every bit the star player the Pride have needed today. You know, Ross, Jake Ross has struggled from the floor, two of 11. It hasn't been, been getting many shots either. You know, it's been Heath Post, and he's also nine of 12 from the field, so he's been incredibly efficient as well. Trey Witter dishes out to Santa Fe, now out to Cummings, dribbles in, Cummings pass, tries to pass behind his back, but it is intercepted by Cho. Charlie Cho. Brock, not too happy on the sideline, just kind of put his hands on his head, kind of, in, kind of a look of exasperation. Tailsbury dribbling in at the bottom, triple teamed here, passes out to Cho beyond the arc, guarded by Cummings, Cho still dribbling now, out to Grant Miller. Now to Masi's, back into Hinkley down low. Hinkley with seven seconds on the shot clock. Pump fakes, relay up, no good. Rebound, MIT, no good once again. And Post with another rebound, his 15th of the day. I mean, Heath Post, there's not enough that can be said about his performance right now. You know, you, you need your other guys to step up. You know, Jake Ross hasn't been great today. But, you know, when you have someone like Heath Post putting up the numbers that he has been this year, you know, he's really been a consistent guy for this Pride team. Lindsay dishes out to Witter. Witter, single digits on the shot clock, puts up a shot from around the free throw line. It is good. Trey Witter with a great look and a great drive there. Yep. Springfield is back beyond double digits in their lead. You know, Trey Witter is pretty much automatic from that range. You know, that little floater, I mean, Masi's tried to claim that there was contact, but went down way too easily for the refs to even give him a call. Masi's with a pump fake, and shot is no good. Grant Miller is able to throw it off Lindsay's leg, and MIT is going to remain in possession of the ball here. Excellent job um, by MIT to keep that. It's a good, good job by Miller. I mean, he's 6'8". He has the length advantage, so, you know, use that effectively. Now, this is an interesting time for the Pride. You know, they take out Heath Post, who's had an unbelievable day of basketball for the Pride with 20, 21 and 15. Who's going to be the guy that scores? Because outside of the first few minutes, Jake Ross hasn't really done a whole lot of scoring for this Pride team today. Hinkley takes a three. It is good. Ian Hinkley. Has put himself out there now with six points on the day after the three. You know, this could be interesting. Could that three potentially get Hinkley going? I mean, he's been pretty quiet. That's certainly what MIT is looking for here. You know, that's Colin what, Lindsay that, that's what the they screen. need. I mean, it's literally been Alex Cho and almost nothing else. Colin Lindsay takes a shot from around the free throw line. No good on the fadeaway. Rebound goes to MIT. Cho is going to take it back up. We'll see if they look to Hinkley again, certainly after that. Guarded by Santa Fe in an isolation. Uh, Hinkley goes for the screen, not taken. And we're going to get a foul here against Santa Fe. That's going to be his third. 
and it's going to be another floor foul. Springfield with their fourth foul of the half. And it looks like Daryl Cross is going to check in here for Santa Fe, who's now looking at some foul trouble. For Springfield, still only up by eight. You know, this is very reminiscent not only of that Coast Guard game, but like the Springfield women's game against WPI. They even every time they got a lead, they couldn't ever extend on it. As Cho hits another three, I mean, Cho now two of eleven from three. You know, gotta think though. I mean, back to back threes, MIT only down by five. This is a dangerous time for Springfield. You know, when you mentioned the Coast Guard game where they looked just to Jake Ross, this game has just been Heath Post. We're gonna need more than just him to step up if Springfield wants to win this game. Colin Lindsay. Pump fakes, dribbles in, double teamed, no foul is called on the layup attempt, and it is no good. Springfield sort of grasping at straws for shots here, and they're not able to go. Yeah, we see Heath Post getting such a check back in the game. You know, some days you need one guy to be the guy, and today it's been Heath Post. Certainly you know, has been. You know, there's been games where it's been Jake Ross in the past. There's been games where neither guy has had a great game and it's been the bench. Today it's going to need to be Heath Post. Excellent look from Mossis, and Darren Pillsbury is going to go to the free throw line on the foul. Masi's uh, passed it from the top of the key in down low and was able to get a great look into Pillsbury, and he's going to go to the line looking to make it a three-point game with these two free throws here. And timeout is going to be called by the engineers. Springfield holding on to a five-point lead here. Just over ten minutes at left in this game. Kevin, what do you think is going to be going on in that huddle? You know, I think for MIT is keep doing what you're doing. You know, they've really locked down on defense. You know, that's the strength of this MIT team is keeping it low scoring, really not allowing teams to get into an offensive rhythm. And for Springfield, you got to move the ball. I mean, you know, we saw the first 10 minutes of the game, what worked so well for them, they were cutting. They were getting off ball screens. They were doing a lot of things really well. But now you see for this Springfield team, they're just, it's just kind of stagnant. It's been if Heath Post isn't getting it done, no one's been getting it done. You know, it just seems like they've gotten very sloppy. You know, I think Coach Brock, he needs his team to clean it up right now. Certainly. And you, you know, also, I mean, this is a game for Springfield. It's the epitome of a trap game. This MIT team, one thing you can guarantee with MIT, they've been very good for a long time. But also, head coach Larry Anderson, as good as they come, especially in New England, I mean, he's one of the most respected coaches, not just in this region, in the entire country. Coach Brock knows... Anytime you have a team as well coached as MIT, you can't ever look past them. On the floor for Springfield is Costa, Baum, Twitter, Post, and Ross. And we're going to have to see if this lineup is able to get something going. Springfield in a bit of a drought offensively since the start of the half. For Springfield, they've been outscored th just 13 to 10 in the second half, but I mean, Springfield was up by 16 er very early in the first half, and you know, Kind of like Coast Guard, they let them back in, and they really haven't ever been able to pull away. First free throw from Pillsbury is no good, which is a nice break for Springfield, especially coming out of a timeout when it seemed like MIT had a lot of the momentum going. Uh, and let's see, we're going to have to see if whatever Coach Brock said is able to trigger a momentum switch as the second free throw is up and good for the engineers. And Jake Ross is going to control the offense here. Passes out to Bob to the right. Bob looking in, dribbles to the left. Passes out to Witter in the corner, being guarded by Cho. Gotta, passes out to the looks right. Looks like a battle down low between Miller and Post. Got to, got to think. In terms of speed, it favors Post as well as shooting ability. Trey Witter deep from deep three. It is good. Trey Witter from deep three and is able to put Springfield back. That was a, a seven-point lead. That was a shot that Springfield desperately needed. You a know, huge you, shot from Witter. You need your, you need your. Traveling violation against MIT. Miller took one too many steps after getting the ball. You and need, Blake Arena is lively right now. And, you know, you need your veteran leaders to step up and make plays when you're struck when your team is struggling. You need your veteran leaders to step up. And I mean, Larry that's Anderson what, that's is going to call right a timeout here. Trey Witter hits the three. And then Springfield gets back, and in large part, thanks to Trey Witter and Drake Roth on defense, force the turnover. And that's really what you need. You need your veterans to step up. And it was also a very interesting timeout by Larry Anderson. You know, he's only got one timeout left. There's still 9.26 left, and it's only a seven point game. So even with that three and the turnover, at most, Springfield's going to have like 
10 point lead at the at, if this possession goes well for Springfield. So, you know, this game's still very much within reach. So, kind of another interesting timeout by Anderson. But, you know, Trey Witter with a huge shot right there. MIT, which is one timeout remaining in this one within the last nine minutes left. They've really been using their timeouts uh, pretty actively in this second half. And we're going to see their strategy from here on as Noah Cummings is going to take the ball up for the pride. Post, pick a set by Heath Post, back out to Witter up top. Witter passes down into Post, being guarded by Cho. Ch ball is lost. Great job by Cho there to be able to slap the ball out of Post's hands, and he's now going to take it up. But guarded by Ross in an isolation. Dribbling to the left, trying to post up on him. Pick a set by Grant Miller. Now it's the switch. Post is now guarding Cho as he's dribbling in. Passes out into the corner. Over to Pillsbury. Pillsbury dribbling in. Double teamed out to Hinkley. Hinkley with an open three. Does not go. Rebound goes out to MIT. Bounced off Costa's leg. And it's going to be an MIT ball. No, down low. No, it's going to be Springfield ball, it looks yeah, like. It went. That was actually a great play by Costa. You know, Miller tried to throw it off of Costa. And while Costa was still in the air, threw it back off of Miller. I mean, that was extremely... Extremely smart play by Costa as we see Sandifer back into the game. But, you know, it's a huge play for Springfield. You know, you, you get another possession on offense. I mean, this could be a chance. Try to extend the lead and maybe try to get a little further out, more distance than you've had from MIT. This pretty much this entire half. Sandifer passes out to Ross. Ross dribbling in towards the free throw line. Loses his dribble and the ball is lost. Hinkley and Sandifer going on a one-on-one. -on -one. Hinkley goes up and it's good. Tough, tough look there for the pride, especially by Ross. And... Heath Post is now going to take the ball up. Springfield with a five-point lead here, 50-45 to 45 with 8.20 left in the second half. Post loses his dribble. Jake Ross in the corner being guarded by Pillsbury. Dribbles in once again, passes out into the corner to Cummings. Cummings able to draw a foul against MIT. That is now their sixth. And that's also foul number four on Alex Cho. He has 20 of MIT's 45, so, I mean, that's... That's not the guy you want to lose if you're the engineers here. It's not the guy you want with four fouls, but, you know, they almost kind of have to keep running with him. I mean, you have 20 of the team's 45. You can't really afford to lose him, but now really kind of limits what Cho can do on the defensive end. you got to think, depending on who he's guarding, try to drive at him, try to get him to get foul number five because if Cho comes out of the game, he's been the guy on his MIT offense. Peeth Post puts up a shot on a fadeaway. No good. And we're going to get an offensive foul call here against Springfield. And MIT is going to retake possession here. You know, a lot more fouls in this half. This is very similar to last week's game against Emerson. You know, the first half we saw was very, very limited in foul calls. Maybe about... Aggressive, about, though. There was about 15 fouls called in the first half of last week's Emerson game. It was a very aggressive game. And then the second half, 35 fouls called. 35. Was kind of I don't know if I've ever seen that many fouls. I mean, there's almost no flow to the game. Of Hinkley in the corner anyway. for three, no good. Wide open shot from Hinkley, not able to go. Heath Post now dribbling up the court. He's got Costa to his left and Sandifer to his right. Costa wide open in the corner. Costa takes a three. It is good. Daryl Costa is able to bring the momentum back and Springfield with an eight point lead. Great look from Heath Post there. You know, Post drove it up the floor. It looked like MIT kind of crashed on the lane thing, and Post was going to take it all the way. Passed out to Costa, and Costa, cool as a cucumber, hit the three. Hinkley being guarded tightly by Costa, passes in. Back to Hinkley down low, out to the corner. Wide open, Macy's is up and no good. Jake Ross loses the ball, gets it back, is dribbling up to the right side, passes out to Cummings on the right. Over to Santa Fe, no, ball is tipped and lost. And out of bounds, we're going to call, looks like, Springfield ball. Going to be off. <laughs> that was a crazy. Off of Miller. That was crazy. Crazy, it goes through the hands of Ross, goes through the hands of Sandifer. Great job by Sandifer to keep it alive. It looks like for the first time, we're gonna see for MIT, number 10, Aaron Fuchs. He's replacing Alex Cho, who came off before. To avoid foul trouble. One. And you know, we might see Cho re-entering very quickly as this is just an attempt to get him out of foul trouble. Because that's not the guy you want to lose. Sandifer passes in, tipped to by Fuchs, and it's going to be off of Fuchs. Springfield is going to regain, is going to keep possession here with 17 left on the shot clock, 7:07 left in the game. Springfield has an eight-point lead. Costa passes out to Lindsay beyond the arc in the corner. Lindsay being guarded tightly by Fuchs, out to Post. Post from the top of the key dishes it off to Cummings. Post hits a screen. 
Cummings back out to the top, guarded by Miller. Ch spin move, and they're going to call a foul here against Grant Miller. So Noah Cummings able to draw the foul here. Great job by him, and he's going to get to go to the free throw yeah, line. That's what you want from Noah Cummings. He got the screen. He on the much fat. He's much faster than his man in Grant Miller. Has the speed advantage. Used it. Gets himself to the line. Now for Cummings, it's just about making the free throws. And he misses the first one as Trey Witter is going to check back in here for Costa. You know, now for the prize, just about being able to convert those opportunities from the line. Cummings now just two of five from the line. Second free throw from Cummings is up. Once again, no good. Cummings unable to convert on the free throws after those excellent moves. And a huge break for MIT here as they're going to try to get back into this game. Hamasis passes in, passes tipped by Cummings and intercepted. He's dribbling up the court, passes to his right, Witter. Witter dribbling in towards the paint and puts up a layup, no good. Rebound, Trey Witter unable to finish on that one. And now MIT taking the ball up the court. Masis you know, once again sailing right down the offense. Looks like Springfield had pretty much everything but the finish. Witter got to the spot, she could not hit the shot. Hinkley puts up a three, no good. Rebound Miller, and it's an and one from Miller. Huge rebound on the second chance there from Grant Miller and MIT now looking at a three point play on the, on the end one. You know, Miller just using his length right there to his advantage and you know, it seems like every time Springfield gets any momentum at all, MIT is able to respond and you know, still 6.20 left, there's plenty of time for Springfield to either stretch it out or for MIT to drive in closer. And the free throw is good, the end one is completed by Miller. Jake Ross is gonna check back into this game here, replacing Noah Cummings. You know, Cummings has actually played pretty well today, but you know, one of the glaring things on his stat line, two of six from the free throw line. And if you're getting to the free throw line, you have to be able to convert, especially in a tight game like this, where you're only up by five. That, those are the difference makers right there. Ross, dribbling in towards the right, guarded by Pillsbury, out to Witter. Witter tipped the pass around a little, back out to Santa Fe in the corner, guarded by Masi. He's back out to Lindsay over to Witter in the opposite corner looking for an open man dribbling out Jake Ross sets the screen back to Jake Ross guarded tightly by Miller Jake Ross with a pump fake seven seconds on the shot clock into Santa Fe guarded post with a mid-range shot good from the corner Heath Post with a huge shot with two seconds left on the shot clock you know, Heath Post once again he's been the guy for the pride today and you know sometimes you need one guy to step up, and today it's been Post. I mean, he's been great all year. He, this is really the definition. Blocked game. by Post. Tell me, there's nothing he's Post can't do right now. I mean, he's. This is probably going to be one of his best games, maybe even of his career at this point. Trey Witter passes it out into Ross, back into Post. Why not give it to him? He's been electric all day. Guarded tightly by Cho, out to Lindsay, back into Post. With 12 seconds on the shot clock. Got the size Post advantage. Post dri driving in with the fadeaway shot. Heath Post off the glass, no good. Rebound Sandefair, and Springfield's able to reset the offense here. Big rebound from Deontay Sandefair out to Lindsay now. Lindsay looking for an open guy, guarded by Pillsbury. Passes across the court to Sandefair. Sandefair dribbles in, puts up a layup, no good. Rebound Jake Ross and Springfield with two offensive rebounds in this possession. Able to take a lot of time off the clock here. Jake Ross and a nice, so guarded by Alex Cho. And timeout called by Charlie Brock. I mean, excellent, excellent job with the offensive boards there from the Pride. Yeah, and you know, that's one of the things this team does so well. You know, they know they're an undersized team. And right now, Deontay Sandifer actually having a great game off the bench, has not scored, but has five assists, five rebounds, including four offensive boards. I mean, that's, it's not just about scoring for this Pride team. Their depth options, they can do so much more than that. You have a guy like Sandifer who can come off the bench, provide some energy, do a really nice job rebounding and passing the ball. And also, you know, we've seen, obviously, Heath Post, not enough can be said about his performance today. Super efficient from the floor as well. But, you know, on that last possession, Jake Ross not just scoring, but also getting the pride in another possession. And when you're in a tight game, that's what you need. Every possession matters. And Springfield able to take a lot of time off the clock in this possession so far. 4.47 remaining in the game. 55 to 48, your score. Pride are looking to come out of this timeout. Maybe finish off a big possession. MIT looking to stay locked out on defense and probably get something going on offense. But you also got to look out for your guys that are in foul trouble. You know, Pillsbury with three, Cho with four. These are guys that you can't afford to lose in this state of the game. So you got to be really careful here Absolutely. with what you're doing. You know, one thing I've been impressed with, Dan Pillsbury has had three fouls since about five minutes left in the first, first half. half. And, you know, he really hasn't had any issues since then. I mean, 
He's done a pretty good job on defense despite being in that foul trouble, but. And on the floor for the engineers is Pillsbury, Miller, Cho, um, looks like, Cho is not in. P looks like Aaron Fuchs and Pillsbury are also in as well as Hinkley and Miller. Miller, Jake Ross taking it up, guarded by Pillsbury, goes to the right. Jake Ross putting on the move, spin move, back out to the corner to Santa Fe, over to Post B on the arc. Post puts up a three with a guy in his face, no good, and the shot clock violation. You know, had, had to shoot that one just to get off, but also, while we're in this game, quick update on the undefeated in the New Max Springfield women's basketball team, up by three with 440 left at MIT, so two very good Springfield MIT games going on today. Mossy's in the corner, dribbles, gets a good move on Ross, over to Hinkley, Hinkley driving in, takes a shot, with a guy in his face, no good, rebound goes out to Colin Lindsay, and he passes it off to Jake Ross, excellent job on defense there from the Pride to prevent any scoring from the Engineers. Post, guarded by Miller, looking for an open man, dribbles to the left, now to the right, over down to the line, Trey Witter puts up a three, it is good, Trey Witter! Has put up a couple of huge threes for the Pride in this game. Springfield with a 10 point lead. And that is exactly what you needed to see from the Pride. You know, they've Absolutely. let them inch back in, and now it seems like they're really keeping them back out. MIT has been know, struggling on offense. You know, Trey Witter has kind of struggled from beyond the arc today, but in really shooting in general. And Miller able to step out. Hopos with a forced turnover. Springfield with another great defensive stop. Checking in for the Pride is Costa. He'll be replacing Colin Lindsay. You know, this hasn't been Trey Witter necessarily his best game shooting the ball. He's just four of 10, but a couple huge threes. He's up to 10 points. The second leading scorer for the Pride, only behind Post, who has 23 points and 17 rebounds. And that's Outstanding. a great game. Last year, Jake po Ross. Post nearly broke the record for rebounds in a game at Springfield with 23 in a game against Westfield. So, I mean, this is an impressive game, and it's not even the most rebounds he's ever had in a game. And there's gonna be a call on the court. Looks like an on the floor foul against Jake Ross. And they're gonna get That'll Ross. That'll be his first on the day. They're gonna get Ross with a push right there. And you know, it's an interesting foul because you know, Ross and Miller just kind of pushing each other back and forth. It's an interesting call when you have two dudes doing the same exact thing, but you only call one guy for it. Noah Cummings checking in for this game, replacing Santa Fe. And Grant Miller is gonna be on the free throw line as uh, MIT is in the bonus. So he'll be shooting one and one. It is good. So he'll be shooting another one. Both teams in the bonus uh, for now. So all fouls will result in free throws from here on out. As Springfield clings on to a nine point lead with three, with just over three minutes left in the second half of this game. Puts up another three throw. No good, oh, not even anything the rim. So a violation against MIT. And Springfield is gonna regain possession here as Cummings is gonna play point guard now. You know, this is the time for Springfield. You know, you can hit a couple shots, put this game out of reach. Not your, pr they can po hold on for the win. It's not going to be the prettiest one, but at the end of the day, a win is a win. You're not going to complain about another W in the win column. Post passes out to Witter. Witter with 12 seconds on the clock, dribbling in, puts up another three. Trey Witter and one. Trey Witter with his third three of the game and and one. And Blake Arena is electric right now. Trey Witter with a fadeaway three, fouled on the play by number 22, Grant Miller, his third. And Trey Witter is going to try and complete a four point play here for the Pride. You know, just think about this, Daniel. The poise that it takes to not only hit a three with a hand in your face, to get fouled. And I mean, Trey Witter is making huge shots and clutch times. And you know, when the Pride have needed it the most, Trey. Heath Post has obviously had a great game, but Trey Witter, three huge threes, and you know, that's what he does. He's that spark off the bench, and he's been everything and more today. Outstanding game from guys like Post and Witter today so far, as the Pride now have a 62-49 cushion on the Engineers. Deontay Sandefair checks back in, uh, replacing Witter as Masis drives out, pinks it out to Hinkley. Hinkley, Hinkley hits a three in the corner. Even and it is now a 10 point lead for the Pride. And even despite that three from Hinkley, the Pride have only allowed MIT 23 points in this half. I mean, they've only allowed 52 for the game. They've done a great job defensively. So, you know, even though their offense hasn't been there, the defense has still been 
airtight for the Pride for the most part today. Jake Ross dribbling in, gets past the defender Fuchs. Back up to Heath Post, beyond three dribbles in. Heath Post chucks up a shot, foul is called, and Heath Post is going to the line for two. And it looks like Grant Miller again with the foul. That's His gonna fourth. be number four, so now he's the second member of MIT with four fouls. Heath Post is on the line now. Looking to extend the lead to at least 12 with these free throws. First one is up. No good. No substitutions being made at the moment. Post will go up for his second free throw. Now it's Hinkley and Miller. This is an area where Springfield normally kind of excels. They haven't really been great the last couple games no. from the free throw line. We see the same... Same thing with Cummings and Post today, just haven't been able to hit the free throws. They're getting, was especially with the last two games against Babson and WPI, two, two, the other two top teams in the new Mac, you're going to need every point. Driving in is Miller, blocked by Jake Ross, but a f and it is out of bounds, but what a block there from Jake Ross to prevent Grit Miller from getting a layup. You know, Ross gives up about three to four inches on Miller, showed extreme explosiveness getting off the ground, blocking Miller from behind. And what a pass that was from Miller to Hinkley. Down low for a layup, and now it's a single digit lead once again for the Pride, with just under two minutes remaining now. And the MIT has entered crunch time here, and they got a great look there. As Post dribbles out to Ross, Ross with an open mid range, no good. Rebound fight between both teams. Rebound ultimately is going to go to MIT. And that's been the story of the day for Ross so far, only with nine points. He's done a lot of other good things, but. Just seemingly after those first few minutes, hasn't gotten his shots to fall. Hankley dishes out to Pillsbury. Pillsbury puts up a spin move, goes up for a layup, and one! Impressive moves there from Pillsbury and MIT. Don't look now, but they are inching their way back into this game as Springfield looks like they're going to check Trey Witter into this game after the end one. He's going to replace Santa Fe. You know, that's kind of the trademark of any MIT team. They're extremely well coached. They're not going to give up. And, you know, they're doing a good job. That was... Really the first time we've seen Dan Pillsbury be able to finish at the rim as well. And the free throw is good, and he completes the end one. As Post looked like he may have been hit there, but MIT is going to call a timeout. I'm sorry, Springfield is going to call a timeout. As the Pride now hang on to a 62-56 to 56 lead. Was that, timeout, was that timeout by MIT? It'll, it's a full timeout with 122 left. We'll take it, too. We'll be back in a minute. We're back here, Springfield leading 62 to 57, but quick update from Cambridge. The Springfield College women's basketball team leading MIT 63-58 as they look to stay undefeated in the new Mac play and get some revenge on the team that beat them right here in Blake Arena. And I mean, it's been a huge day. Shout out to Emily Jakes, 20 points, 13 rebounds. Outstanding. And first year, Sam Horahan, 18 points, 12 rebounds. She's really turning into it a superstar for the Springfield women's team. but She has two straight New Mac Rookie of the Week uh, pr uh, honors, I believe. Absolutely. I mean, she's really been a, she's turned into a true stud as back to this game. As MIT looks to have met, entered foul mode now, Costa fouled by Hinckley as soon as he got the ball on the, off the inbound. I'm just surprised to see them enter foul mode. Still this one, early. One, still 121 left. And I mean, if Springfield's able to make their free throws, it's all but over. As long as MIT does, if MIT doesn't hit threes, game could be all but over for them. And they don't have their primary three-point shooter in show win, so you have to really question that decision as Costa is now going to look to end the free throw woes that Springfield has been facing. Unable to do it at that moment as the first one misses. Deontay Santa Fe is going to check back in for Trey Witter. Springfield now 11 of 18 
from the free throw line. That not what you want to see. That's not what you want. If you're the pride, you know, these free throws are really costing them. You know, they make four or five more. You're, we're, there's a double-digit lead, and the lead, the game is pretty much out of reach. And they hits the second one, so Springfield now up by six. It's a two-possession game with just over a minute to go in the game. Mossy passes into Miller. Miller hits a shot, four-point game. And Costa is going to get the ball over to Ross now. Because Ross is unguarded and taking it up pretty pretty easily. Is now, is now under a minute left in this four-point match between Springfield and MIT. And Ross is going to call for a timeout. It's probably a smart timeout right there by Ross. You know, Springfield looks like MIT will not foul on this possession. You know, Springfield can just get a good shot. I'm trying to make that kind of the dagger in this game. Because, I mean, you know, for pretty much this entire game, Springfield hasn't been able to extend the lead, and even when it looked like they did with the Trey Witter and one on the three, MIT fought back once again. And this has been a game of MIT just never dying. You know, down 16 early in the first half, able to chip away. Haven't really gotten there, quite there yet, but they've certainly been close uh, a number of times. Absolutely. And this the you know, they, they really hung around. That's the thing with MIT. They, they don't go away. They're going to make everything tough, and that's what they've done today. That's really the key. MIT also out of timeout, so if in the case that, you know, this game does get more interesting, you know, they're going to have to go off. You know, I think, to. I mean, you got to think that's what head coach Larry Anderson talked about in their last timeout as well as this timeout. This is the message right now. If they get a, sh if they hit a shot, this is what you do. If they miss a shot, this is what I want. So kind of drawing up two plays in the huddle, one if Springfield misses, one if Springfield makes. So I think that's kind of what the message is right now in the huddle. There's going to be 56 seconds remaining in this one. Springfield clicking on to a four-point lead against the MIT Engineers. Setting up for an inbound play on the side of the court. Witter goes out to Cummings at the top of the key. Cummings being guarded by Mossies. Dribbling to the left side, out to Post, who's had an outstanding day. Post looking for an open man, dribbles to the right. It's nine seconds already on the shot clock. Ross dribbling out. Jake Ross driving in, puts up a shot from around the three point or free throw line, no good. Rebound being tossed around and it's grabbed by Masis. I, I don't think that was the shot that Springfield was looking for on that possession, a very forced shot. Well, there was there was little time on I the mean, shot clock. They, but they waited so long on the shot clock, gotta be surprised that they would have waited that long. So Miller, Masis goes for a three to make it a one point game, no good, rebound, Jake Ross. Huge stop from the pride there and Jake Ross is gonna get fouled by Pillsbury, that's gonna be Pillsbury's fourth. Now the third player on MIT to enter four foul range. And you know, I really thought right there, Ian Hinckley might have had a look from the corner. I was very surprised to see Hinckley not take that one. Big, big stop here as Jake Ross can um, really make it more, much more difficult for the engineers here uh, with these free throws. It's gonna be, looks like he'll earn the double bonus now because that was MIT's 10th foul, so he's gonna get two shots here. First one is up and it is good, Jake Ross. Now makes it a five point game for the Pride with 13.9 seconds remaining in this game. Jake Ross literally just enters double figures. Not a great shooting night for Ross, but you know, he did it in other ways. He did it on the defensive end. He did it on the offensive end. And that's, or excuse me, on rebounding and passing the ball instead. You know, sometimes that's what you gotta do. Mossies kicks it out in the corner to Hinkley. Hinkley hits a three with three seconds left. Springfield's gonna look for an open man. And timeout is called by Charlie Brock. And we're looking to at a 64 to 62 point Springfield game with 3.5 seconds. So really what Springfield just needs to do now is get the ball off to somebody, assuming you're gonna get a foul, make both free throws, and this game is all but over. And this MIT team just does not go away. It seems like every time the Springfield team has found a little bit of breathing room, they don't go away. And now, I mean, if you don't make two free throws, then MIT has a chance to tie it. And That's not what you want to give, especially after all this game has gone. You know, you don't want to give MIT a chance to get back into it, but, you know, Springfield has let them hang around for long enough. I think I think if you're Charlie Brock here, you've got to get the ball into Jake Ross. That's the guy that you want shooting, or even Heath Post, yeah. maybe. Or Trey Witter. I mean, or Trey, Trey Witter. Trey Witter is almost as automatic as they come. He's the best free throw shooter on the team. Granted, he's taken a lot, granted he's taken a lot less opportunities, but also... Huge update from Cambridge. The Springfield College women's team moves to 8-0 in the new MAC, setting up a huge conference matchup at Babson on Wednesday. 
the two top teams that sit at 8-0 and in the new Mac on the women's side. That's a big statement win for the Lady Pride. Absolutely, and they will take on, it'll be Babson and Springfield Wednesday night at Babson. Should be a great one. Graft to the women's and team. A foul. Post gets fouled. Looks Against like. Miller. That's going to be Miller's fifth, so he is into this game. Post fell, uh, trying to cut. So Grant Miller is going to be done for the day. Uh, he finishes the day with nine points on the board. And and actually did a pretty good job in terms of rebounding, adding length to this team. And, you know, you got to think he's earned some extra minutes for this MIT team. He's someone who's not gotten the most consistent minutes, but he's played well in his time on the court. And... You know, that was a great break from Springfield. Not even having to do much to draw that foul that they were looking for. And now but you're going to put for, one of your... But for MIT, it also did not take any time off the clock. So you still have three and a half seconds if there's a miss exactly. to do something. And it's going to be two shots as they are in the double bonus. Heath Post already with 23 points on the board and a very impressive day for him. And he could shut it down uh, right here. For Post just need to simply make the free throws at this point. He makes the first one, so now MIT can only go for a tie, it seems. You know, if he makes the second one, I would not put anybody anywhere near the ball. You can give them an open three. It doesn't matter if they make it. It would be game. Exactly. Post puts up the second free throw. This has a lot of momentum to it. It's good. Springfield with a two-possession lead with 3.5 seconds remaining. MIT has no timeouts. They're going to have to go for something here. Mossies chucks the ball down court to Pillsbury. Over to Hinkley. Hinkley dribbles around, puts up a three. It doesn't matter. It doesn't go. But Springfield takes the 66-62 win. Another impressive win for the Pride. And they improve to 11-1 in conference play, 20-3 overall. You know, Kevin, what did you like from this game from the Pride? Not a lot, honestly. You know, just kidding. It was not a pretty game. It was one of those games that you're going to have to grind it out. Not their best game. However... The sign of a very good basketball team is no matter if you have your A game or your B game or even your C game, you find ways to win. And that's what the Springfield College Pride team continues to do. It wasn't obviously their prettiest game. There was a lot of things that did not go well for them. But at the end of the day, they were able to make enough stops. They were able to make enough shots in the end. And they were able to win. And a lot of it goes to guys like Trey Witter, who, had, who did a great job, hit some big shots. But also credit to MIT. Every time it looked like Springfield had extended the lead far enough out, they would come back. They always seemed to have the answer, and you know MIT did a great job sticking around this one. You know, I think one glaring blemish that the engineers are going to look at in this game is that early shooting and the woes that came gone on there. Yeah, you know, honestly, I would just say the whole game. They were, even though they started two of thirteen, even after that, they were only six of twenty-eight for the whole game. I yeah. mean, that's not good enough to win you any basketball game. But for Springfield, also shooting woes, fifteen of twenty-three from the free throw line. That. It's going to need to be better if they want to beat the likes of WPI and Babs in their final two games. That's going to do it for us today. For Kevin Sachs, I'm Daniel Curran. We'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to this production of Springfield College Men's Basketball. We'll see you guys.